What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is James and in this video we're going to be talking about document.js. It's a file used in Next.js and I always seem to get questions about it. So I thought I'd make a short video describing what it's used for, some of the limitations, so that you guys can use it in your next project. So let's get started. Right, hello, sorry to interrupt, but I just need to get this out here. 50% of you are not subscribed to the channel. That means you're missing out on content. So if you see a red button, click it and let's get on with the video. So here we are in a default Next.js application, just the standard one you do when you create Next app. So inside the pages folder, you can create your custom document.js. Now there are required pieces of information that I'm going to go over and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what the default looks like behind the scenes and then we'll remove all the non-important features and then maybe we can talk about adding and what you can use it for. So first you need to import document. You need to import HTML. You need to put head, main and next script. And all of those come from next slash document. And once you've imported those, at this point, you're ready to write your document. So what you can do is just write class my document extends document. Then inside of here, obviously, we need to export default my document. So in theory, this is ready to go. But by default, you need to return at minimum all of these pieces. So the default version actually has something, the uh, get initial props. And that takes in context. And then from there, it just gets some initial props and then returns them. So this is what a default one would look like if you were to open the Next.js code or look in their uh, code examples. It's also in there. So this part is actually not required, but I wanted to show you what is there by default. So this is there. And then the next part is they do a render method. They do a return. And inside of the return, they return all the required fields. So that would be HTML, and that's required. And then inside of that, obviously, you need a head. And then you need the body um, tag. And that body tag is going to contain the rest of the tag. So we just close this one out. And then inside of here, you need to include main. And that's a self-closing tag. And you can also do next script, which is also a self-closed tag. So this is the default that you need to make this actually work the way that you expect. Um, if these are not included, and let's just fix this so, so that it's happy, um, the render needs to be just the open and close, and then we don't need those. There we go. So if you do not include all of these features by default, what will happen is is your pages won't render correctly. So that's an important factor. So if you are gonna make a custom document, you need to include these files. If you do not include them, you will not get a render. Now, obviously, if you don't need any initial props for whatever reason, you can actually remove this out. This is not required. And also this render as well, like it's not required. So you can just have a return method and that would be it if you so wish. Uh, we'll leave the render on there. So what you can do here is like add lang and set that to English. Um, and, and obviously if you wanted to say import some script tags or some CSS or fonts, you could also add these in, in this section here and then they would be available on every page. Now I want to point out a few things. This document is rendered on the server. So in the server it's rendered, so things like event handlers and on click will not work in here. So you can't do that. Um, 
So that's one thing. And then the second thing here is also don't add any app logic here. If you add application logic or custom CSS like styled JXX or anything like that, um, and, and it won't it won't work. Essentially, you shouldn't be doing that. And here, if you want to add application logic or a shared component such as a wrapper or a toolbar or a menu, you should be doing that inside of here in your app.js file and wrap this component around it. Now, if you haven't seen anything on app.js, I have a video, I'll put it up on the screen so you can look at it. Um, another thing to note, if you do decide to use the get static props that I removed, the function is not called during client side transitions and nor when a page is statically optimized. So if you're using any of those features, none of that will work. And the biggest thing that I think a lot of people get caught up on is this does not support the data fetching models that Next.js provides, such as get static props or get server side props. And then you can customize the render page if you so wish. If you want to enhance your application for some reason, you can do some stuff inside of that get initial props. But bear in mind that you can either do it by the whole React tree or per component basis. But you shouldn't be using that to do things for like application logic, but you could do it for CSS in JSS. Sorry, CSS in JS libraries that need to wrap that application to work properly um, with server-side rendering. So if you're having some sort of weird like blink issue, which a lot of people have with dark mode, you can use this to do your CSS in JS. So keep that in mind. Obviously, this supports TypeScripts just like everything else in Next.js. So if you need to use TypeScript, that's fine too. Um, but yeah, so here is a really quick video just about Document.js. At this point, this is ready to customize. So if I had a script, I could add it here. Or if I had, you know, uh, a CSS library that I needed, I could also add that in here and they would be available to our application. So next week we'll get back to crash courses, but I hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time, see ya.